60 Minutes Overtime talks to Sharon Alfonsi about her interview with Paul McCartney. Here you are interviewing Sir Paul McCartney. He makes fun when you call him a rock legend, but he is a rock legend. You're a rock legend. Yeah, baby. Come on. You talking to a rock legend. That's All how, right. That's how you walk around the house, right? Ooh, ooh, call. Kidding. Well, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't say that, but anyway. Well, he's been famous for a long time. Who's been famous longer than Paul McCartney? He handles it really well. Yeah. I think a lot of people could learn from the way that he manages fame. Was it a daunting task? I was nervous, a little nervous. So are you new to 60 Minutes? I'm the, I'm the newest. Are you? Yeah. You really realize, like, this, this is a part of history. This man was in the middle of history, and, you know, he's done a million interviews. We're good? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's just talk about music. Yeah. I got to tell you, when you're walking around that studio with him. Yeah, that's a little uh, a Celeste that's from um, Abbey Road. It Long just, it, it paralyzes you. There were times where, I mean, I think I look at the camera and I go, oh my gosh, like, Paul McCartney's playing the piano right here. I don't care how many 60 Minutes cameras were there. It was just me and Paul, and we were having a moment, and he was playing the organ for me. So I'll mess around like that, you know, and then sort of say, oh, that bit was okay, yeah. you know. So that was the first half an hour of the shoot, and she got up and she walked over to me, she's like, yeah, okay, I think I can die now. Bill Owens, a longtime executive at 60 Minutes, raised his hand to go to England with Sharon Alfonsi and produce the story. He is a student of the Beatles. He understands their place in history, but he also really, really loves the music. When was the last time you saw your rooftop performance? Um, a little while ago. I, I know way too much about the Beatles. The reason that we're showing you this is how tight it is. He was like, you gotta see this, look at how they're so looking at each what other. This is about. So to do a Paul McCartney story is purely selfish. Let's think about that, but I think that's a good point. Um, that's good. So what is going to satisfy the extreme Beatles fan in this story? I mean, I think he was fairly unguarded. While we were doing the interview, one of his musical texts leaned over to me. He's like, I've never heard half of these stories. So you had said you wrote Let It Be based on a dream. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a dream about John? Oh, yeah, I often have dreams about John or George. Mm -hmm. um, I often dream about people who aren't here anymore. I think it's one of the great things about dreams, because you get to re-meet them. <laughs> you know, you get to hang out with them, and then it's only when you wake up, you go, oh, oh, oh yeah, it was a dream. I mean, I can already see the headline, John Lennon visits Paul McCartney in his dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they good dreams or bad yeah, dreams? Yeah, they tend to be very good, mm -hmm. yeah. The relationship was so complicated. They needed each other so much. I think Paul McCartney is the only person who could tell John Lennon no, or that doesn't work. There was never like, no, well, I really think this is great. Yeah, you and didn't the other dig one, in on things. The other one vetoed it, yeah. it was dead. The earliest example of that was, I had a song, uh, saw her standing there, she was just 17, she'd never been a beauty queen, was my line. Okay. And John kind of, hmm. I go, I'm not sure about that line. So, so well, let's change it. Just 17, you know what I mean. Whole different, whole different 17, thing. 17, yeah. know what I mean. Paul McCartney returns again and again mm -hmm. to his reflections about insecurities mm -hmm. during your interview. Mm -hmm. You know, I can imagine looking at Paul McCartney mm -hmm. and thinking, well, he's, he wouldn't have any insecurities. Yeah. But it's, it's not true. He's very, it was very human, right? He was, I thought um, he was surprisingly open about that. I think his insecurity is internal and that he just wants to make sure that he continues to move the ball forward. Like, how do you do better than Sgt. Pepper's and the White Album, Band on the Run and, you know, Flaming Pie? I mean, he's, he's had all of these unbelievable hits, but yet he still needs to make music. I think it's if you care about what you're doing, if you really want to get it right, then you've got to deal with insecurities. It's what makes it right, yeah. you know, because you that's wrong. I, I hate that. I hate the way I sang that. Yeah. And you've got to say to your producer, yeah. can we do that again? Yeah. He said, I think it's okay. Yeah, I know it isn't. So I'll go out and do it again. You go, oh, that's better. 
as many times as he talked about having his own insecurities and what drove him, one of the things that surprised us was all of a sudden he turned to this story about John that I had never heard before. Because I remember John was a bit insecure. Mm -hmm. What? John Lennon, you know. And he gets choked up, Paul does, telling the story. And I remember him once particularly, strangely out of the blue saying, oh, I worry about how people are gonna remember me. Mm. And I was like, John, listen to me, look at me. You're gonna be remembered as one of the greatest people. Mm. <laughs> Getting choked up. I uh, said, so, you know, because um, you are, you know, you're fantastic. You, Sharon, we, yes. we've got five minutes, okay. so it's just a, a quick establishing shot where... After watching your, your interview, I liked him in a way I hadn't before. I completely agree. He's a, he's a natural storyteller. Um, this is the old Mellotron. They said this is going to put orchestras out of business, uh -huh. which it hasn't. I think he liked to spar a little bit. Like, we had fun. Come on! He yeah. was reflective and thoughtful, but also didn't take it all so, so seriously. See? That's it. That's the end. 